full time. I expect a miracle. You impossible. They will not Come on. Are you excited? I expect a miracle. There is nothing impossible. Move your body. 
explain what the Lord has done for me. If your neighbor is double it, move your neighbor. How you doing? I, I, I can't explain. Says I. I can't explain. Are you ready? Jesus, you love. But for me, I mean, I just feel like we should continue. I, I, okay, I'm speaking your mind as well. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You may have your seat this morning. Hallelujah. Please, I would like you to turn to your left, to your right, and just welcome your neighbor to church. Just find out how they're doing. Everyone is looking so beautiful, handsome this morning. And please, just find out what your neighbor does. You know, you never can tell what can, get, uh, what can happen out of here. Find out what it is that they do for business. You know, find out, you know, what area or what they do in church. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So you're welcome to church this morning. You're welcome to Harvesters International Christian Center, where we change lives and we raise peace setters. And I always say this every time I come on here. It's not a cliche thing for us. I am a living testimony, you know, of a changed life. Hallelujah. And are there living testimonies of, you know, changed lives here this morning? Hallelujah. Glory to God. So you can just look around and see that, you know, uh, this is, you know, our testimony here at Harvest House International Christian Center. At this point in time, I would like to welcome our online audience um, joining us from all over the world, America, Canada, um, the UK, Zimbabwe, Australia, wherever it is that you're joining us from. We appreciate you. I want to say thank you for joining us this morning. And I want to assure you that the Lord has something in store for you this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. I'm just here to give a few, uh, few announcements. Um, First of all, next week, Sunday, we'll be having our Mother's Day celebration here in church. Hallelujah. In fact, I must say, this month of March, we have loads of things in store for the women. Hallelujah. I thought the women would be excited about that. 
So loads of things we have in store for the women. So next week Sunday, uh, I'm just going to give you a sneak peek. Uh, next week Sunday, we'll be giving out scholarships to some people, right? So I implore every woman, you know, uh, every mother, and we're not just celebrating mothers, we're celebrating the women in our life. So um, be you a mother, uh, a woman, a single woman, a married woman, you know, we want you to come here with your friends and families next week, Sunday. There are loads of things. We'll be giving out gifts, and like I said, we'll be giving out scholarships to some people. Hallelujah. Glory to God. With that being said, the 17th of March as well, we'll be having the Women's Business Fair. Hallelujah. The Women's Business Fair. Like I said, we have loads of things in store for our women this month of March. So we implore everyone to register. There should be a bad cop. There should be a barcode you know, on the screen uh, that will enable you to register. So please register for the business fair. Um, if you have things, it is that you sell, things that you do, it's an opportunity for you to come showcase you know, your business and what it is that you do. Hallelujah. So please, if anyone has a testimony here in church this morning, I would like to implore you to just make way to my left, which happens to be your right, and there will be a pastor there you know, to take your testimony. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Um, Okay, um, I don't know if we all have this slip on our seats. We have, please, if you have this slip, can you just raise it up? Can you just wave it? Hallelujah. Um, in preparation for our NLP conferences, um, the Lord has blessed us so much and we are able or we are reaching out to, you know, to people uh, outside of our geographical location here in, uh, that's Nigeria. So we have the NLP conferences coming up. We have NLP Canada. We have NLP USA and we have NLP London. Hallelujah. So we have an NLP prayer conference RSVP form. And on this form, uh, we want you to be able to just write down the names of four people it is that you're looking to invite, right? So we have a uh, name of your invited guest. We have their email addresses, their phone numbers, uh, and the location. So uh, your friends or loved ones, we expect you know that you just give us their contacts and uh, we'll be able to reach out to them. And please do not forget to put the location. So either they're in, the Lo in London, USA, or Canada, please, we really implore you to do that. And after filling, we would like you to just drop um, the slip with the ushers, any usher close to you. Hallelujah. Can we do that? Can we do that? <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. So I come bearing gifts this morning. I come bearing gifts this morning. Uh, I have some gift cards. I have some gift cards, some shopping cards here with me. And uh, some people will be going home with this today. So, um, if you're here in this service, uh, you invited four people. Four people. I'm going to be giving this out to five people today. So, if you're here in this service and you invited four people, and we'll confirm your four people. This is not... Um, We'll confirm your, five, your four people. So please, anyone in service this morning that is here with four people, I have gift cards to give out. It's here. It's not audio gift card. It's here. Your physical gift cards. Hallelujah. Gift card going. Gift card going. Gift card going. Okay, gift card gone. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Well, please, we implore... You know, you come for services like this. We employ you to come with your family and friends. Hallelujah. But the gift cards will still be here. You know, uh, we'll do that in the next service. Hallelujah. Please, I would like you to look to the closest screen, closest to you, you know, for, um, for announcements. Hallelujah. Our church is a large church. See, our church is a large church, but a small church. It's a large church because we gather in large settings, but we also gather in small settings called small groups. The reason why is that you will not effectively be blessed in a church if you come just on a big Sunday like this. We have thousands of people. Sometime on a Sunday in Harvesters, we have over 30,000 people attend all of our churches on a Sunday. But the reason why we gather in small group is that you need a place where you can say, I have friends. One of our members was kidnapped and it was taken to Ogun State. The moral of the story is that somehow we are alerted by it because he was in the ushering unit. What happened was that as soon as he was kidnapped, the ushering unit set up a 24 hours praying team. Praise God, he walked back home. But what about if he didn't have people that knew him? How will we even pray? You would just be saying, someone, someone, we don't even know who someone, someone is. So, question, how do you join the small groups? It's very simple. You can ask someone next to you, you can go to information decks, but the recommended way is to go to the growth track. You will meet the pastors, they can pray for you, you will discover how you can do baptism, how you can do marriage preparation courses, how you can meet people in your same business. It's all those things. 
business for you. There is no role in life that is more essential than that of motherhood. Mothers are amazing, resilient, hardworking, and so much more. Sunday, the 10th of March, we will be celebrating all mothers in the house with amazing gifts, scholarships, business grants, spa sessions, sip and paint sessions. Single women are not left out. There will be barbecue, cocktails, and so much more. I want to use this opportunity to invite you to join us as we celebrate all the women in our lives it is going to be super amazing i'm looking forward to it and i can't wait to see you there Precious humans of investors, happy new month and these are the announcements. Do you have family and friends in the UK, Canada and USA that you would love to invite for the NLP conferences? Then this is the perfect time to invite them. Kindly scan the QR code to get them invited. Next Level Prayers continues this week. Our focus from March 4th to 6th will be in the new month apostolic prayers. March 7th will be I will not be denied and March 8th will be my family and I receive our good news. Join the prayers from Monday to Friday by 6.30 a.m. Have you registered for the NLP conferences coming up this year in Canada, USA and London? If you haven't, scan the code shown on the screen. connect with Everstays and discover the ins and outs of the church, learn details about our beliefs, then our services such as how to name and dedicate your baby, how you can get married in our church, how you can get support from the church and many more. You will also have the opportunity to become a Harvesters member. If this is you, then join our Growth Track Step 1 themed Discover Harvesters. Kindly scan the barcode on the screen to get registered. The first class holds right after the service. Don't miss this. Kids and Teen Serve Day is coming up on the 10th of March 2024. Here at Harvesters, we are committed to raising young leaders who will impact their community and nation. Serve Day is an opportunity for your child to begin to lead by serving others with their time, gifts and talent. Please sign up your child today at the information desk or at the Kids and Teens Church. Kindly sign up for water baptism coming up in March. The date is 30th of March and the barcode for registration is on the screen. The entire month of March will be dedicated to celebrating women. So join us on Sunday, March 10th for a special Mother's Day celebration where we'll honor and celebrate the remarkable women, mothers and mothers to be in our lives. Don't miss this opportunity to celebrate these incredible women. And women, come prepared to be pampered. Harvester's Parents Forum with Pastor Mao Meidowu is here again. It's coming up on the 16th of March 2023 at 8am WAT. In this edition, we'll be talking about parenting and finance, especially how to navigate the current economic reality in your home. Mark your calendars and plan to attend. Scan the code on the screen to register and visit Harvester's Kids Zone on IG for updates. Are you age 20 to 25 and ready to make a difference? Register for the next batch of the Harvester's Internship Program starting in March. In the first batch, 38 carefully selected interns experience transformative changes. If you want to be a part of this greatness, then register for this batch by scanning the barcode on the screen. I have come to the end of the announcement and until you hear from me again, enjoy the rest of the service. Grace, 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 this is my story. Good day, Pastor Polachi. My name is Davida Ochubana. I'm sending my video testimony from Boston, Massachusetts. The Lord is so kind to me when you say grace is our story it has become that anthem has become my reality i just finished phlebotomy training i was doing my internship it was tense you say the people that will speak for you will speak for you pastor Bolaji. boom the next day and my manager just be like i love davida that's fine people i started receiving kindness donors were recommending me that's how i finished my internship I asked God for five things, Pastor Bolaji. Hey, God, God gave me the bottom pot miracle. I was retained. I passed my national exam to be certified phlebotomy. I asked God for that in my congregation letter. I asked God for a car. My husband bought me a car. I passed my learner's permit test. 
to the high to the main testimony the bottom pot miracle i told my husband that after you prayed in our five days encounter you said if you are going for a deal if you are going for a job i just told my husband that i'm going to ask them to increase my salary pastor but I did, this is my first time in the medical field i don't have experience but what i earn by grace is the same salary people that have five six years experience have I now said I want more, that the God I'm serving him, I sow a seed. I told my husband, he now said, ah, David, I offer tear. <laughs> if you understand your value, you want to tear. I said, I'm not going to tear, I'm going to ask for more. He said, you don't know what you're earning. I've been here for 20 years. My five, five years, I don't earn what you earn. i like, don't worry, I will go. If I tear, I tear, if I not tear, to God be the glory. I went to my manager. Pastor B, what shocked me the most, I asked God, I want $5 extra on my pay. And God gave me the bottom pot miracle. When I asked for it, she says, it has not been done, but we'll break protocol for you because we like you. I say, Grace is my story. Pastor B, with six months experience in medical field, I just returned to give God all the glory. Grace, 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 this is my story. It is your turn to testify. So don't miss out on this awesome time every weekday by 6.30 a.m. on all our social media platforms as displayed on the screen. Grace, 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 this is our story. Get up on our feet this morning just as we spend some time to pray. Hallelujah. I'd like us to open our Bibles to the book of Hebrews 13 verse 6. And I'd like us to read the NLT version. Hebrews 13 verse 6. Hebrews 13 6. The Bible says, it says, So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. We can say with confidence that the Lord is our helper. So I will have no fear. What can mere people do to me? What can mere people do to you? The Bible is saying this morning, he said, we can boldly say, we can say with confidence that the Lord is our helper. Irrespective of, you know, what the economy is saying right now, irrespective of what the dollar is saying, irrespective of what the pounds is saying, the Bible is letting us know this morning that we can confidently say that the Lord is our helper. So I want you to open your mouth this morning and begin to thank him. Say, Father, thank you, Lord, because I know you are my helper. You are my helper in times of need. I will not be afraid. I am not afraid of what mere men will do to me. I am not afraid of what the economy is saying. I am not afraid of what, you know, of what the dollar is saying. I'm not afraid of what people around me are saying. But Lord, I can confidently say, Lord, that you, oh God, are my helper. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I would still like to take us back to that. No, please, I would like you to leave this, the scripture up. I would like you to just look at the second part. It says, the Lord is my helper. I want you to think about it. I want you to regurgitate it. I want you to just ponder on it. The Lord is your helper. Irrespective. The devil might lie to you and say, oh, you know what? Ah, the Lord is not answering your prayer. You know, you've done so much. You've done too many things that the Lord, you know, will look on you and say, no, I'm not going to help you. But the Bible made us understand here this morning that the Lord is my helper. The Lord is your helper. So with that conviction, knowing that, I want you to thank the Lord and say, Father, thank you, Lord, because, Lord, you are my helper. Thank you, Father, because indeed, oh God, you are my helper. You are my helper in times of need. You are my helper in times of trouble. You are my helper in the good, in the bad. I want you to open your mouth this morning and say, Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you, oh God, because the confidence I have, Lord, is that you are my helper. You are my helper, oh God. Sika parande kosha kepa, repande kepele de kasa kapa, aya palende ki parando se, se parande kepele de kosha kapa pa pa pa, repende kepele de kosa. I want you to press, press in this morning, press in this morning. Thank him, thank him, tell him thank you, thank you, Father. Repande kosa kapa, yande le kosha. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we're praying. And for you to be able to enjoy this confidence. This confidence is strictly for those who are rooted in him. It's strictly for those who are sons and daughters. So I don't know if there's anyone amongst us here this morning, you know, who, who have not given their life to Christ. 
you're looking to, you know, just surrender your life to Christ. We're just going to play a simple prayer, you know, this morning. So if there's anyone like that, please, all heads bowed, all eyes closed. If there's anyone here amongst us, you know, you, you are making this decision to just serve Christ, to give your life away to him. I would like you to just raise up your hands this morning and we'll pray a prayer together, a simple prayer together. Hallelujah. Is there anyone like that amongst us here this morning? Is anyone amongst us here this morning? Hallelujah. And for those who are lifting up their hands, I just want you to pray along with me and say, Father, I thank you for a time like this. Lord, I come before you this morning. I confess with my heart and I believe with my heart. I confess with my mouth and I believe with my heart that you died on the cross of Calvary for the redemption of my sin. Lord, forgive me for my sins. Lord, and accept me, accept me into your kingdom this morning. Lord, even as they have prayed this prayer this morning, I pray and ask, oh God, that your mercy, oh Lord, we go down the aisle, oh Lord, and down the roads. And whoever it is, oh Lord, that has made this decision, Lord, to serve you. Father, we thank you, Lord, because there's a rejoicing in heaven over their lives. Lord, we say, blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' precious and mighty name we pray. Amen.
Sing it to him, everyone. Let's sing it. Sing it, Yeshua. spend about three minutes to pray the first prayer is a prayer of thanksgiving the bible says it is of the lord's mercies that we are not consumed it's of the lord mercy today is the first sunday of the month of march the lord has kept us the lord has preserved us it's time to go ahead and praise let's go ahead and bless his holy name this morning anywhere you are let's go ahead and bless his holy name let's go ahead let's go ahead and bless his holy name let's go ahead and Let's go ahead and bless his holy name. Let's go ahead and bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Let's bless his holy name this morning. We bless you, O God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can we lift up our two hands in thanksgiving to the Lord? Thank you, Jesus. Father, we are grateful. Thank you, Jesus. We're grateful for the gift of life. Oh, thank you, Lord. We're grateful for good health. Thank you, Jesus. It seemed like yesterday we said Happy New Year. Now, two months are gone. Thank you, Jesus. You've kept us. Thank you, Jesus. You've preserved us. Thank you, Jesus. You have been our cover. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says, He that watches Israel neither sleeps nor slumber. Oh, yes, Lord. Our God that watches us, thank you for watching us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the progress we have made. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for children. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for wives. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for husbands. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for brothers. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for sisters. Thank you, Jesus. We give you the praise and the glory. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. We're grateful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Of a truth, we know you answer prayers. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, you do. We give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to stand and pray for the month of March. We're going to pray for March from Psalm 25, verse 14. Verse 13, rather. Psalm 25, verse 13. Somebody say hallelujah. 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 Let's read just the first line. I want to go. His soul, soul shall, shall dwell, dwell at, at ease. ease. We're going to pray that this month of March, I prophesy ease. Amen. Amen. As a nation, we prophesy ease into Amen. this country. Amen. Glory to God. We hallelujah. Everyone that is in between transactions, everyone that is in between appointments, everyone that is in between some kind of deal, we prophesy results with ease. Amen. Breakthrough with ease. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's go ahead and pray, everybody. Let's go ahead and pray. Let's go ahead and pray. Let's go ahead and pray. We prophesy ease. We prophesy ease. We prophesy ease. We prophesy ease. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we we prophesy ease today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is my prayer for you. All of you that are starting new businesses, it will be with ears. Amen. All of you that are trying to raise capital, raise funds, it will be with ears. Amen. The most common word you will say this this month and this year yes. is breakthrough with ease, Amen. results with ease, Amen. progress with ease. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Where it has been difficult, we prophesy ears. Amen. To our country, we prophesy ears. Amen. To the whole world, we prophesy ears. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you believe it, shout, I receive it. I receive it. Say grace. Say grace, say grace, say this is my story. Amen. Amen. I, I receive for some single people marital ears. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we shout three apostolic hallelujahs before we have our seats? No, no, I never said, uh, you know, I never said not lucky hallelujah. I need apostolic hallelujahs. Are you ready? Yes, sir. The real ones. Yes, sir. Okay, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, I will give it to you. That was not Lekish, but that was Ajaish, you know. <laughs> well, the real apostolic Kalia is more aggressive than that. Glory yes. to God. You know, I used to do it in the apostolic church when you were growing up. We used to like, you know, but now you're like, <laughs> hallelujah. You know, the real, how about someone praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You may have your seat. Look at your neighbor and say, this month there will be ease. Praise God. If the person is not smiling, say, brother, smile. This month there will be ease. <laughs> Sister, smile. This month there will be ease. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Just a couple of announcements, housekeeping before I get into teaching. Today is, com today is um, combined service, so we have all of our churches streaming. You know, all of our churches are streaming, so Bagada is there, Antony is there, um, Mikurudu is there, Alimosho is there, Abuja is there, Ibado is there, uh, London is there, Birmingham is there, um, not London, uh, Glasgow, um, where now? You know... So many places I, I'm, I'm trying to catch up. Harvesters is solo. Harvesters is Yaba. You know, okay, for the first time, Harvesters is Koyi, praise the Lord. Yeah, Harvesters is Koyi. Harvesters are Ja. You know, so many people are, you know, are streaming and all of those things. You're all welcome in Jesus' name. Okay, so one of the things we're doing as a church is that things have gotten tougher in the economy for a lot of people. So this is what we're doing. So we have two initiatives, both for our church members. See me after service. So um, for our church members and for people outside the church. So all of you within the church, there's what we call hope bag. 
It's a, it's a bag. It's, it's rice, raw rice, raw beans, spaghetti, all of those things. It's in the bag. We don't advertise it because people kind of take advantage and just be like, I need it. And some people don't need it. Some people take it and go and sell it. So if you belong to, um, if, how do you get it? All you have to do is to talk to your small group leaders in a cell or talk to, um, or talk to and your HOD, your department, and they will link you up. All you need is that you get a ticket and they'll tell you a pick up point and you pick it up. The second thing is that we're also working with transportation. So from in the next few weeks, we're going to be giving free transport vouchers. Yeah. Um, it's a differ from church to church that can transport people to work and will help you so that you don't have to spend so much on transportation. Glory to God. And of course, we're going to kick off our scholarship scheme. We're giving, I think, 100 or 150 people scholarships. So, you know, praise the Lord. We're giving them scholarships. So that's for those people that are called harvesters. What are we doing for the whole of the world? Because hunger doesn't know if you are harvesters or not. So what we're doing is that we're opening food banks all across Nigeria. Not just that. So number one, there are food banks. Where, so next week exactly, we're going to open up two or three in Lagos. We're going to open two food banks in Lagos. We're going to announce it. And we're going to open in strategic states and cities all across Nigeria. We're opening in, we're opening in Ghana, in Accra, in Ghana. If you know people in Accra, help tell them no. We're opening in London also. We've gotten requests of people that just struggling. I'm surprised. I thought when people stay in London that everything was okay. You know, people are struggling. So we're going to help all the ways we can help. So we're opening in there. Praise the Lord. And we have Pastor Yomi Thomas here today. It's his birthday. Yomi, come quickly. You know, Pastor Yomi T is the pastor of Harvesters, not London. You know, and I he just said that he will leave not London today. So we're proud of you and happy birthday. Uh, happy birthday. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm praying that all the things we pray for will happen in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm sure everyone in London is shouting right now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. The second theme is um, um, next Sunday is Mothers and Women. So this month is Women's Celebration Month. So you need to know that men, they, they're literally going to forget about us and just focus on the women, you know. You know. So next Monday is Mothers and Women's Day. Let me show me some things that are lined out. Number one, some women randomly will be picked and they'll be given funds to start their businesses. Praise the Lord. Either to start or help their businesses. People are going to get mentoring classes with, you know, top business people all across the place. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Imagine you coming to the service and you're getting tickets for facials, for massage, for spa tickets. You know, imagine you coming to the service and you're getting free hair, you know, you know, hair. So, next Sunday, it's, 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 we call it Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman Sunday. Praise the Lord. Wonder Woman Sunday. So this is what I'm going to do. All the ladies, the more people you bring, the higher your chances. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because the more you are, whatever happens, either you or your friend will get it. Is that not so? Exactly. So next Sunday, I want to get all the women in your life. You know, I want to get all the women in your life. All of the husbands, make sure you come early so that your wife can make sure she can get some things. Just imagine after Sunday, you have all these drinks and chapman, and you're just able to relax with a, just a nice virgin colada, you know, the pina colada. You know, virgin pina colada, you know, just to, you know, just to say, praise the Lord. Or virgin moet, praise the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. So that's happening. The, um, the second to the last thing is that one of the things you also will notice that on social media, there's such a lot of news going on. And most of the news on social media is very challenging. It's really very challenging news. It's someone's divorce, someone died. You know, like this week now, there's been a lot of, you know, death, even in the last 24 hours on social media. One of the commitments we have is to push good news on what? On social media. I want to push good news on social media. So this is a simple way. But I can't do it alone. So all of us need to do it together. So this is what you do now. Everybody bring out your phones, please. Bring out your phones. Please bring out your phones. The first thing is that you need to follow all of our handles. So, you want to follow the handles on Facebook at Pastor Bolaji Dou. You want to follow the handles on Instagram at Bolaji ID. You want to subscribe to the Harvester TV channel or Twitter or Twitter or X at that. Then, the new one, TikTok. 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 I've not seen anybody win my 100,000 naira challenge to do the best TikTok video. 
you know, I've not seen anybody do that. You know? Someone said USD, no Naira, praise the Lord. The CBN said we should must only spend Naira, praise God. So this is what we want to do. And this, let me tell you how we're going to influence the world. Every time I post a very lifting message, encouraging message, all you have to do to help your friends is to click and share it. That's all you have to do. So let me show what that looks like. We're going to try it right now. So I'm going to use Twitter. I'm going to use Twitter. I'm, so I'm going to use Instagram rather. I'm going to use Instagram. So Instagram, there's this powerful message I shared. That's, will you get this from here? That this powerful message I shared is pinned. I'm wearing like a white and black shirt. It's there. So if you're watching the message, you click on it. If you click on it, if you click on it, all you have to do to share is this. You see this arrow? You see this arrow over here? Just click on the arrow. And your arrow will bring up people you can share to. Your arrow, when you click on the arrow, your arrow will tell you something like, you know, who do you want to share to? So I'm saying, I want to share. And it will tell me who to share to. And you can just say, share to all of my contacts. Share on my story. The better option is share on what? On my story. So when you share your story, other people get to see it. You know when you get to see it, it's easy to invite them. It's, how are you doing? You know, that's the pilot, right? Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. I met a nice pilot in the last few days. You know, and it's nice to see your husband and you guys holding. Come, where's the camera guy? Oh, his battery is, where are you? Praise the Lord. No, stay like that. Don't change. I love the posture. This is how you should be holding each other in church. Yeah. Just, just help me get that posture. That's a nice posture. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's only in the Bagada church and Antimji hold themselves that way. It's nice to hold themselves. Yeah. But next time, let the singles breathe. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, so let's go ahead and share. Let's go ahead and share. Once you share, I'm going to say it. Let's go ahead and share. How many of you have shared right now? So all of you in all of the churches in Antony, in Abuja, in Ibadan, wherever you are, let's go ahead. Let's just push the message forward. Let's go ahead. If you've shared, raise up your hands. Let me see. Talking about thank you for sharing. Your friend has not shared. Let me tell her, yes, she hasn't shared. What, what, if you've shared, raise up your hand. Let me see. Let me see. Suname, you and Obina, can you share, please? You've shared already. What, what, what's this? No. Suname, please help me pray for your husband. You know, yeah. Let me bind him. The spirit of not sharing, bind him. Amen. Who else has not shared here? Have you shared? If you've shared, just raise up your hand one more. Let, let me see. Let me see. I'm waiting, I'm waiting. No, no, no. I'm going to wait for one more minute. In the other churches also, I'm waiting so that we all can share. So get on your Instagram, share, and let's learn that. So anytime we're doing services, next level prayers, you see the videos by yourself, put a comment there and share with your friends. Glory to God. It's a simple way you can evangelize. It's a very simple way you can what? Evangelize. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right. And please remember the next level conference in the UK, in its holding May the 4th, at Wembley in the UK, all of you that have friends, relatives like we all do, please remind them to register for the conference in the UK. Hallelujah. Let's get into the Word of God today. Let's get into the Word of God today. Luke chapter 10, Luke chapter 10, and we're going to serve prayer. And Father, we want to thank you because you are kind and you are good. I'm praying today, as the Word is being thought, let it come in such a dimension it will challenge us to come to a deeper place in Christ. It will come with wisdom to meet everyone at the point of their need and answering their question in Jesus' name. Can you just play a pad and not flip through it? Thank you. Yeah. Praise God. Luke chapter 10. So this month we're talking about this month we're talking about the word of God. We're talking about our focus is teaching on building on the word of the Lord, on building on the word of the Lord. And it's it's a very powerful teaching, I must tell you. Luke chapter 10 in verse 38. Luke chapter 10 in verse 38. The Bible says this, and I wanted to notice this. The Bible says this. Now it came to pass, as they went, it entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received them into her house. Verse 39. And when she had, a, and she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Very, very instructive. 
one of the things you will notice is this, and this is very fundamental, is that Jesus Christ found himself going to places where he was accepted. As a matter of fact, it says that if you are persecuted somewhere, take your things and move to another place where you'll be accepted. And when he sends his disciples two by two, he told them in a very powerful way. He said that look for a house where you'll be accepted. You know what I'm saying? So, because one of the most painful things is if you love someone and the person does not love you back. And this does not even, it can do with marriage. It may not do with marriage. It's very painful. The reason why it's painful is because everything you do, every expression of sacrifice, every expression of love, every expression of gifts will not be seen. And you will feel used. You will feel abused. One of the things you want to really bear in mind is this, and this is very powerful. If you are in that situation where you love someone and you feel abused because they don't love you back, you, your love is thrown back at you. One of the things you want to do is this, is to remind yourself that because they do not reciprocate your love does not mean there's no value in you. Because the tendency is that when you love someone and they don't reciprocate your love or return back your love to you, you begin to think in your mind that maybe there's nothing valuable in me. Remember Joseph, his brothers did not love him back. It did not mean Joseph was not valuable. Yes or no? Yes, it did not mean Joseph was not valuable. So what do you do? What you do is this. The people that are not responding to your love are not responding to your love because they cannot see the value in you. But it does not mean that you do not have the value. The parent of David put him at the backside of the desert, a place of no value, but God saw him on the throne. So you must be careful, let you interpret rejection as a lack of love. You know, so what do you do here? You begin to remind yourself. And this is very powerful. It's very powerful. One, there was a story of a, of, of a man that was trying to teach his child about value, rejection, and all of those things. And one of the things he did was this. He gave the, he gave the son a watch, an old watch. He told the son, go to the street and go and try to sell it. When the son went to the street, go to, go to sell it and try to sell it. They were going to buy the watch, buy it for a hundred dollars. And he said, okay, hundred dollars, okay, fair. You know, he came back. When he got back, he said, go to the pawn shop and try to sell it. The pawn shop looked at the watch and said, we'll buy it for two hundred dollars. He said, that's fine, come back. He said, go to the museum and try to sell the watch. The museum looked at the watch and begged the boy. He said, please, will you accept forty-five thousand dollars for this watch? And when he came back, he said, Dad, what happened? He said, it's not the watch that is the problem. It's that the people do not know the value of the watch. So every time you are with people that don't know your value and reject and choose away your love, go and look for people that know your value. Go and look for people that celebrate your value. Glory to God. There's no point staying in a place where they are managing you when others are scouting around or how they will treat you like a king and treat you like royalty. Leave the place where you are being managed and move to the place where you are treated like what? Reality. Are you here? Because some of you are feeling less of yourself. Not because there's something wrong, but you have always stayed around people that just have a way of looking down at you, talking down at you, throwing back your love at you, and you are feeling used, you are feeling less of yourself, you are cringing, and there are some people that will celebrate you. And let me tell you something, everybody here. When you find people that treat you well, make it a big deal. Because they are not common. I'm telling you. When you find people that will treat you well, make it a big deal. Because some of you, you will see people that will treat you well. You will not stay with them. It's the people that you're not treating well you'll be heading for. You will head until they use your hair as frying pan. Glory to God. So let's learn from Jesus. Help me walk on the sand. It's a bit fled. You know, so let's learn from Jesus Christ. Jesus will always go into a place. Jesus will always go into a place where he was received. Let's go ahead and read. Let's keep reading now. Back to the book of Luke chapter 10. We were in verse 39. It says, and, he, and she had, it's loud. I just want it to be more compact. It's fled. Yeah. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Verse 40. 
And Mary was combat. The word combat there means distracted about much serving. And he came to him and said, Lord, do not you care that my sister left me to serve? Bid her or ask her that she will come and help me. Verse 41. And Jesus, instead of asking her to come and help, Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, you are careful and troubled about many things. Watch this now. What was Jesus Christ saying to Martha? He addressed the reason why Martha could not sit down and hear the word of God. He said, Martha, all this service you are going up and down is because on the inside you are distracted. You must be careful of people that do so much church to distract themselves from problem. And sometimes you can come across someone like that. You will see them very active, very active, very active, very active. But the truth is that all of those things are distraction. The true service of God is not there. So when it comes to a service like this, they are ushering, they are standing, they are jumping. But when it comes to the real sitting down at the feet of Jesus, there is no active sitting down at the feet of Jesus Christ. And let me say this to you. If you keep serving without having a systematic way of sitting down at the feet of Jesus, you will find that that you will crash spiritually. And the reason why many Christians crash spiritually is this. They are like petrol tankers that supply petrol. When you have a petrol tanker that supplies petrol, even the petrol tanker that supplies petrol will need petrol to keep moving. Is that not true? So they give other people petrol, but they forget to fill their own tank. So what happens that after about five years, you will hear that God filled me. After about five years, I don't know if this thing works again. And the reason why is that they were carried away with a lot of activity. They did not pay attention to their own spiritual life. In the word of Solomon, all those people's vine I watched, my own I left unguarded. So the Bible says, and Jesus said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful. And he said, thou art careful and troubled. Did you see that? He said, you are troubled about many things. You are concerned about marriage. You are concerned about this. You are concerned about money. You are concerned about dollar. You are concerned about your health. And you see what Jesus Christ said? What Verse 42, Jesus said to her, he said, but one thing is needful. What am I saying to you? He said, I know you are concerned about child. I know you are concerned about this. He said, one thing is needful. And let me say this quickly here. Uh, can you give me the other translation? Oh. At the core of our Christianity, the core of our Christianity is to learn to stay at the feet of Jesus and hear his word. And the Lord answered Martha, verse 42. He said, Mary has discovered one thing. One thing most important. By choosing to sit. He said, he said and this is, I want to notice how Jesus prioritized sitting at his feet. Sorry, Jesus prioritized hearing the word than serving. I want to say to you here, prioritize the word of God in your life. He said, and Mary has discovered the one most important thing. By choosing to sit at my feet, she is undistracted and I will not let this privilege be taken from her. One of the things you must realize is this. Until you prioritize the word of God, you can't have any sustainable breakthrough. Either it's a spiritual breakthrough, either it's a physical breakthrough, it's a marital breakthrough. The first thing you have to do is to prioritize the word. I understand you pray. I understand you love to sing in church. I understand you love to clean the cars. But listen to me. He said one thing is needful. One thing. You must learn to prioritize. You must learn to prioritize the word of God. Someone says, how do I prioritize the word of God? Let me ask you a question. Do you have a Bible study plan? If you have a Bible study plan, it's an indication you prioritize the word of God. Number two, do you have a place you write what you read in the Bible? You know why? Because whatever you don't write, you are not serious about. Do you have a place you write and say, this is my Bible study note? You, you will notice every time I come to preach, I have a note. Every time I come to preach, and the reason why is that I've learned over time to prioritize the word of God. Jesus Christ looked at Martha. He said, I understand that you want this. I know you want, you want that. Because we must be careful lest you serve yourself into nothingness. You cannot put you in church. You'll just be carrying tight to I don't know God. 
So he says, one thing, what is needful? He said, one thing is needful. What is it? He said, the ability to sit down at the word. The ability to sit down at the word. And let me say so the truth. Let me say this to you clearly. As important as this is, many Christians do not know how to sit down by the word. They think that all they do on Sunday mornings is enough. I want to ask you something. How can you eat for two hours and think that that will sustain your spiritual life? Someone before you came this morning, you have eaten. Once you get home, you eat. And you think one meal in, on a Sunday morning will sustain you for the whole week. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. I love what Smith Wigglesworth said. He said, four things about the word. Read the word. Consume the word. Believe the word. Act the word. So why is the word of God important? First Peter chapter 2 verse 2. Why is the word of God important? Why is it important for us to sit down at the feet of Jesus? Why is it important to prioritize the word of God? First Peter chapter 2 verse 2. This should be a memory verse for everyone. This should be a memory verse for everyone. This should be a memory verse for everyone. I'm, I'm telling you why we must prioritize the word of God in our lives, in the life of our children. For example, if you have kids, your kids should be able to recite the, the books of the Bible. They should be able to recite the 12 apostles. How can you be a great mother and your kids don't know the Bible? Who is going to teach them the Bible? How can you be a great father and your kids don't know the Bible? You must make the effort to teach them the Bible. See what the Bible says here. One to go. Let's read one to go. As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may what? That you may grow thereby. Can, can you give me the... Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Not the next verse. The other translation now. I think it's the message translation. As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word of God that you may grow thereby. Yeah. Okay. So, it says this. Now, like infants, it says, it says, now, like infants, like infants at the breast, drink of pure kindness, then you will grow up matured and holy in the Lord. Give me the passion translation, please. The passion translation, because it's mixed together. Let's use it together. Want to go? In the same way that nursing infants cry for milk, you must intensely crave the pure spiritual milk of God's word. For this milk will cause you to grow into maturity, fully nourished and what? Strong for life. So if you're not growing spiritually, this is a problem. This is a problem. You don't value the word of God. Someone says, I prioritize the word of God. Let me ask you a question. How come you have many apps yet you don't have one Bible app? You prioritize the word of God. You have time to go to work. You have lunch time, but you don't have Bible study time. You prioritize the word of God. You don't even know where you're reading the Bible tomorrow because there's no Bible study plan. These are the questions you need to ask yourself if I'm prioritizing the word of God. He said, in the same way, nursing infants cry for milk, you must intensely crave. He says, you must intensely crave. Crave for the pure spiritual milk of God's word. For this milk will cause you to grow. So, why is the word of God important? Number one, the word of God nourishes me and causes me to grow spiritually. Write that down somewhere. You should have a Bible note. Yeah, the word of God nourishes me and causes me to grow spiritually. The word of God nourishes me and causes me to grow spiritually. How many of you have seen, how many of you have seen pictures of kids with kwashoko? Have you seen them before? What happened? It's a big head. It's a big stomach. And what? Thin legs. Yes or no? And that's a function of what? Malnourishment. That's how some people are spiritually. They have spiritual kwashoko. And the reason why is that they are not feeding on the proper diet of God's word. They are not feeding what? On the proper diet of God's word. You need to have a plan to feed your spirit. You can't just say, I come on Sunday. Two hours on the week cannot feed your spirit. When you're, not, not, when you're, when you're malnourished, one of the things to do is that you lack energy. Have you seen people that have not eaten for a long time? They're very weak. Some of you, by the time you fast, by the time it's 3 p.m., the way you will just be moving. Oh, the way. And the reason why is that you, because you've not eaten. 
So, guess what? Now you've not read the Bible for one month. Do you know how your spirit is? Your spirit is so worn out. That's why any small news, you are depressed. Any small news, you are discouraged. And the reason why is that your spirit cannot carry you. Your spirit cannot carry you. Because your spirit has not been nourished. A pastor went to see a family. And they had kept some money, about maybe about $300, on the table just next to him. They forgot it there. And when he sat down, he sees them in December. He visits members in December during Christmas. He sat down. And when he sat down, you know, sweet, how are you guys doing? Oh, my God. We always pray. We always read the word of God. Oh, sha -ba -ba -ba. you know how Pentecostals do, you know, and all of those things. So when after it was done, he went. Then the wife noticed that the money that they put on the table was, had disappeared. Ah. The wife was concerned. The wife wanted to ask the pastor. But the pastor said, are you okay? Yeah, you're going to ask pastor if he stole the money. So, months and months went, they never got the opportunity. But remember that pastor visited them every December. So the next day, December, he came, one year after. And when he came, they had finished eating on the dining table again. And the wife could not hold it again. He just asked, he said, sorry, sir. I'm not suspecting you, but something, there's a question in my mind. Last year when you came, there was a $300 just by where you ate. When you left, we didn't see it again. By chance, did you see it? Oh, the pastor said, oh, yes, I saw it. I took it and I kept it in your Bible. He said, are you still looking for it? He said, yes. He said, didn't you open your Bible? I want to ask you, if God keeps something in your Bible, will you find it? If God keeps, I'm telling you, so for one year, and meanwhile, when the pastor came, how is your quiet time? Oh, shalom. Oh, the Bible says, and meanwhile, they were not reading their Bible. This is a question to you. If God keeps something in the word, will you? And God has kept something in his word. He has, to, he has kept things about your life, your future in this world. But will you take out time and open the Bible and find it? He said one thing is needful. One thing is needful. You, you must, you know, I love how people get passionate about Chelsea, about Man U. But listen, you need to get passionate about the word of God. The word of God needs to excite you. Oh, glory to God. You, you must learn to fall in love with the word of God. David said, I rejoice over your word like he that found good spoil. You, 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 I love my Bible. Grace God. I love my Bible. When you read of the apostles, you are so stand up. It's not a storybook. It's life. Manual for living. A standard to live by. Jesus said, one thing is needful. What is needful? Sitting down and hearing the word. Jesus Christ said, if you need one thing, it's the word. And there was no other time he ever said, one thing is needful. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. I said, glory to God. I said, glory to God. So when you see people that don't, that don't take in God's word, they, they'll be low on spiritual energy. Let's go and pray. They can't pray because, because their spirit is weak. Any small thing, they, they are discouraged. Any small thing, they are discouraged. Any small thing, they are tired. Any small thing, they are depressed. Why won't you be depressed? The word of God is meant to build you up. The word of God is your energy. His low cost boost. Uh-huh. Have, have, you, have, you, have, you, have you taken look at it boost before? It's, it's boost for your spirits. Once I'm so tired with all that's going on around me. I'm not tired though. I've got the word in me. Say, I've got the word in me. As you're going to the office where the contract is, they, they say, the man said they will not give anybody paper. You start shaking. The word is not in you. Once you hear that information, the word will rise up. You will talk, didn't you read Psalm 24? He said, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Oh, shalom. The earth is the Lord and the fullness. He says, everyone is a tenant. God is the owner. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. I said, glory to God. You pay attention to the word. You give yourself to the word. 
When you wake up in the morning, you study the word. You put the word in your mouth. You put it in your mind. The word of God, that's what you put there. You know, when, 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 when I got born again, if you met another Christian, one of the first things you will ask is that, how is your quiet time? I don't know how many of you remember those days. How is your quiet time? And for the first five minutes, we'll be interacting scriptures. We'll be talking scriptures. But now, hey, I like your chain. Oh, <laughs> no. How is the word of God in your life? The second thing the word of God does for us is this. Psalm 119 verse 105. Glory to God. Are you here? Someone say hallelujah. What does the word do for us? Psalm 119 verse 105. I'll read the King James and I will read what? The Passion Translation. The Bible says, says the word is lamp. Ah, hey, hey, hey. He, he, he's telling us what the word does. He said the word is lamp unto my feet and is light unto my path. The reason why God describes the word as light and lamp is because there's a there's a connection between what the light and the lamp does that the word does. He said, "The word is lamp unto my feet, and light unto my path." What does that mean? No, first of all, your feet talks about movement. Your, he says, no, "When I'm moving, I, I don't stumble because the word is lamp. I, I don't make bad marital choices." I don't make bad investment. I don't raise my children the wrong way. Because as I take my step, the word sheds light. Are you hearing me? The word is sharing light. I'm not walking in darkness. No, I'm not. The word is sharing light. So let me put it this way. Number one, the word helps me make better choices. How does it help me make better choices? See, some people, their choices ruin them like Samson. The more I study the word of God, let me give a good example. Just imagine, for some reason, you went on like a mentorship program with Bill Gates for two years. After two years, how would you be thinking? And all you do is that like, every day you talk to him for two hours. After two, what will happen to your mind? No, talk to me now. Will he expand? Will he expand? When you hear the most high every day, why won't your mind expand? If you are still thinking like an African, you have not studied your Bible well. Because once you hear God, you forget color. The, the, the background comes away. You forget everything. Because the word helps you make better choices. Someone says, how do you know what to do? The word helps you make better choices. The word helps me make what? Better choices. Glory to God. Look at him. I said, the word helps make better choices. You know, why, how the word helps make better choices? Because, can you pull out the scripture one minute, please? Pull out the scripture, please. It said, the word is lamp unto my feet and light unto my path. Give me the Passion Translation. This is very powerful. This is how the word helps make better choices. Glory to God. It said, the truth shining, shining light guides me in my choices and decision. The revelation of your word clears my pathway. Where's the x-ray? Come with the x-ray. That's fine. You, it's okay. You stand here. Stand here. So all of you think this guy is healthy, right? When you look at like, oh, he's handsome, he's healthy, he's this, he's that. But now that he has x-ray, now that he has an x-ray, you know what? All that we judge him by how he looks, I judge him outside and inside. The word shines light so that you can judge outside and inside. The x-ray is a form of light, yes or no? So when you're making marital decision, you're not looking at skin color. The word helps you check inside. Because the word shines on the inside. It's an x-ray. So he looks good though, but this x-ray says, mm, this kidney and this lungs, this long lumbar five and long lumbar six has a problem. Not him. Is the enemy will die in two years' time. But looking physically, you couldn't see that. But by the time you look at the word, this is why the word helps you make better decisions. Because the word shines light. You can, without extra light, you cannot see what is inside. 
But when the word shines light, you can go deeper and see what is inside. Question, the reason why you had made all the former mistakes was because you were making decisions based on what you could see. It's time to make decisions, not just based on your eyes, based on what the word of God shows you. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say the word of God is lamp and light to me. Say the word of God is lamp and light to me. Say I don't make decisions based on my senses alone. My, my decisions are guided by the word of God. Oh wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. <clears throat> The second thing the word does for you is this, and which is powerful. So the word helps me make better decisions. The word helps me make better decisions. The second thing is that the word, the word of God helps me see better. Because how does it help me see better? It illuminates my mind. Do you agree that if it's dark here, a lot of you will not be able to tell what I'm really wearing. You would have, you would, you, you would have an idea. Do you know how difficult it is to find things in the dark? The reason why is that your eyes cannot see. It's not because it's not there. But it's dark. You can't see it. So what the word does is to illuminate your mind. You, 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 all of a sudden, oh yeah, wow, I can see clearly. Oh wow, I can see clearly. Oh wow, I can see clearly. How can I see clearly? The word is illuminating my mind. Praise God. I said praise God. I said praise God. One guy told me, one guy, one, guy was, one guy was crying, very bitter. Bitter against God. Bitter in life. He said, nobody, no, he said, nobody is helping me. Nobody is helping me. Nobody, he said, I don't know what I've done. Nobody is helping me. And I said to this, I said, listen, eh, from what I've studied in the Bible, if nobody is helping you, most of the time you are looking for help in the wrong places. He said, ah, it's not that I know that will help me. It's not that I know that will help me. I say, read the Bible very well. God always allows the people you know to disappoint you. So that help will come from strange places. Familiar does not mean helpful. Familiar does not mean what? Helpful. That was why, listen, eh? When he came to David, nobody in his, in his family recommended him. It was God that told Samuel that the king is not there. Call for him. The same thing. Just read through the Bible. Read through the Bible. Nobody in the family recommended that Joseph could interpret dream. When the king had dream, didn't Potiphar know Joseph was there? Potiphar knew he was there now. He knew he had the gift. Why didn't Potiphar? God always, God loves to use unlikely sources. To humble sources that are familiar. So that you will understand that familiar does not necessarily mean helpful. Familiar does not necessarily mean helpful. I, I, I remember one time, and listen to me. Some of you are here, you've been disappointed by someone close to you. Maybe someone poured you phone. Maybe someone promised you and said, I will give you certain kind of funds. Uh, when you want to start your business, have you heard that before? When you want to marry, don't worry, I'll give you phone. Then the time comes, they don't pick up. And you become angry. You are pained. That, ah, see what this man did to me. You must learn something. That the reason why that happened is this. Because most times, when God wants to bless you, he does not use the familiar. And that's what, I'll give you a practical story. When I was in the secondary school, I was very active in fellowship. And there was a teacher in charge of our fellowship. There was a teacher in charge of our fellowship. There was another Muslim teacher. So when it came to prefect selection, normally the students would not be there. And it would just be the teachers. So they are selected prefect. So this Muslim teacher called me and said, Ah, what happened between you and the teacher in charge of fellowship? They are very active in the fellowship. They are one of the main persons in the fellowship. I said, Why, sir? He said, During the fellowship, during the prefect selection, when they mentioned your name and asked us to vote for you, I called his name and I said, he should defend you. He said, I'm not going to defend anybody. I'm not going to defend him. He said, it was a Muslim person that stood up and spoke for you. He said, the reason why you prefer today was spoke for you. Then God reminded me that help does not come from the familiar most times. The reason why is that if help comes from the familiar, you would think man did it. You will not know God did it. 
it was a Muslim person. So the uncle you thought would help will come up with stories. The person you thought would help will come and say, then all of a sudden, the person you think will never help will come and say, this is what I want you to do. I'd be like, wow. You know why I'm saying this to you? Because God's word illuminates your heart. So when you're thinking something, God wants to open your eyes and say something else. I'm going to close with this. And this is very powerful. I'm going to close with this. When you read the word of God, what should happen to you? Three things. Three things. Very powerful. Very powerful. When I read the word of God, how do I understand God's word? There are two principles I want to discuss today. Two principles of understanding God's word. Number one, Matthew 18, 16. I hope you know the Bible can be used to deceive people. Yes or no? Exactly. Matthew 18, 16. Read together. I want to go. And if you will not hear thee, take one or two weaknesses. That's what? Everybody read the next line, please. Everybody read the next line. One or two. That's in the mount of two or three weaknesses. What does that mean? Everything someone teaches from the Bible, the Bible says it must be established in two or three scriptures. It's a principle. I'm teaching you how to interpret the Bible. So when someone comes and says that, ah, if they don't bath for you naked in the, in the forest, you cannot have a breakthrough. You say, thank you. And it opens one scripture to you. And I say, that's good. Give me two or three. Why? The principle is this. In the mount of two or three weaknesses, every word is established. And if you see people that want to, you know, when people want to defraud people, they will look for one scripture and just use it. But now say, explain it in two or three ways. They can't find it. So one of the principles of interpreting scriptures is to say, this thing that's been said, where is what? It's in two or three weaknesses. The second principle is this. When you read the verse, this will help you understand the Bible a lot. Okay, I'm going to say it again. This will help you understand the Bible and help you from people that are want to be crooked with the Bible, deceived with the Bible. This will help you. It's the principle of the context. Every time a scripture is read, there's a context to the scripture. There's something the person was trying to say. So, if someone said, this is what the scripture says, go back and read what? The context. So, the first thing you read is the context. But to understand the context, you are going to read the pretext. Pretext is what was said before that thing was said. Then you are going to read the post-text. Post-text is that what was said after that thing was said. You know why I'm saying this? When I was younger, I heard a story. And I heard it from W.F. Kumwe. And this lady, had the, she claimed that she had demon spirits. She went to see a prophet. And the prophet opened the Bible and showed her the story in First Kings where the Shunammite woman, the, the Shunammite woman's the son died. Is it Shunai or Abigail? Is Abigail, right? One of the, one of the women, the, the son died. And the prophet sent Gehai say, to use the rod seven times and it didn't work. So the prophet told her and said, you are demon, they are the demon, eh? The reason why they can't remove it is because your demon is special. He said, when the rod did not work, what did Elisha do? Elisha came to the child and lay himself on the child seven times and the child woke up. He said, what I will do is that you will take off your clothes. He said, I will lay myself on you seven times. The lady took off her clothes. They laid on her the first time, first round, the seventh time. The only reason we heard this story was that she got pregnant. And the reason why she got pregnant, because someone did not tell her about in the amount of two or three weaknesses. Okay, Elisha did that. Let's even leave the whole story. Give me two or three people that also did that. None. What is the context? The context is a dead child and a living woman. The context is, is a boy and a man. This is a man and a woman. They will just come to you and say, Hey! Pour him a kai! And, and when they want to collect your money with spirituality, they will release the tension. Hey! I, I see something. They always say, you know. The next thing. For me to pray for you, you must give some offering. You, must, you, know, you know the offering. It's a, it's a dangerous offering for a dangerous problem. You just ask them that, sir. Jesus Christ said, freely we have received. Freely give. Uh, does God charge for miracle? That's it. But look at this verse. Look at this verse. He says, sir, what is the pretext? What's the pretext? Once you talk like that, the man will say, don't worry, don't worry. This one, they, they are harvesters. They can't be too busy. 
They, they've learned Bible. They've learned Bible. They say, go, 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 go. Then your mother that took you there and I said, yeah, you know too much. You know too much. Obey, Baba. And I say, Mom, it's not about prophets. It's about Bible. Because in the amount of two or three weakness, every word is established. Are you getting it? Yes, sir. The key thing is this. That this is the key thing. The key thing is that you get to a place where you have a deep hunger for the word. He said, one thing is needful. You must, you, must, you must learn to desire the word of God. Your, your best possession in the world is the word of God. There's a song that says that I have, I, have what? I have a wonderful treasure. The word of God is my treasure. How do you go one day, you don't read the Bible? You should have a principle. No breakfast, no, no Bible, no breakfast. No Bible, no breakfast. No scripture, no supper. You should be full of the word. Hallelujah. Full of the word. Full of the word. When bad news come, you can't stay because you're full of the word. Full of the word. You know, knowing the word helps you discern error. You are difficult to deceive. You are difficult to be moved because you're full of the word. So on Wednesday, you're coming. Someone say you're going again. Ah, you're so serious. You say, I'm committed to the word. I love the word. I'm, I'm not a bye-bye Christian. I'm not a gaga Christian. I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a social media Christian. I'm a Christian for real. Christian for real, I give you to the word. We submit to the word. We prioritize the word. We want to know what the word says. Like Jesus Christ, he said, it is written. It is written. It is written. That's what we want to hear. Not, mm, I feel like, I don't know, you know, sha, sha, sha. No, 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 no. It is written. But how can you quote it if you don't know? Question. If God kept a gift in your Bible, will you see it? After many months. I know you will see it. But it's not been... After six months. Stand, let's pray. Father, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Father, baptize me with a hunger for your word. Father, baptize me with hunger for your word. Father, baptize me. Teach me to prioritize your word. Lord, teach me to what? Prioritize your word. Teach me to prioritize your word. Go ahead and pray, everybody. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Teach me to prioritize your word. Teach me to prioritize your word. Thank you, Jesus. And in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Lord, I'm praying for everyone here that you please teach us, challenge us to prioritize your word. We we'll give you the praise and the glory today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Say with me, say, I'm giving to the word of God. I, I don't know if you mean it. Say, I'm giving to the word of God. Please, you can have your sins. Glory to God. Hall hallelujah. No, that's weak. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We're going to receive our Titan offerings today. And you know, this is why it's good to know the word of God. Because when it's time to give, there's no need to, to do a lot. You're convinced. You're convinced. Why do we give? Number one, our giving is a form of worship. Like, our giving is a form of worship. Whatever you love, you give to. If you love your parents, you give to it. If you love Asna, you give to it. Whatever you love, you give. The second reason why we give is this. Our giving is a sign of faith. People can't give because they're afraid they'll never have enough. We give because we believe that the Lord shall supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ. So we don't withhold, we stretch out. Praise God. And we believe our giving is blessed. Amen. If a titan, stand on your feet. If you're giving your icy offering, stand on your feet. Let's go ahead and pray this morning. Let's go ahead and pray this morning. Let's go ahead and pray. Even if you're giving at home, stand on your feet and let's do that. If a titan, stand on your feet this morning. You're giving your icy offering, stand on your feet. Let's go ahead and pray. Let's pray with the spirit of faith today. Let's pray with the spirit of faith today. Can we believe God? I, you know, as we pray this morning, I'm believing that your, minim, your maximum will become your minimum. What does that mean? Whatever maximum has been to you in business... It will become what? Your minimum. Because the grace of God will be working. Can we go ahead and pray together today? And I want to hear a big amen. Can we go ahead and pray together today? Amen. Praise God. Father, in Jesus' name, we want to thank you for the opportunity to bring our tithe, our Isaac offering and offerings to you today. And I declare over your people that, Lord, their maximum today will become their minimum. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I declare that doors will open for them. Sanctify the giving we ask you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can we shout a big hallelujah? 
God bless you can have your set. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Glory to God. While we're doing that, if today's your first time in Harvesters, will you raise up your right hands? We'd love to welcome you in Jesus' name. My first time in Harvesters. Let's put our hands together big time for them and welcome them in Jesus' name. Wave your hands above your head. My first time in Harvesters. You don't even have to stand up. Just wave your hands up. There are several people under the gallery over there. There are several people up in front. There's this head, some guy with glasses here. There's this lady in the blue shirt here, in the blue top here. Glory to God. These three sisters over here, just wave your hands above your head. Let's walk up. In the gallery, there are people in the gallery. Let's go ahead and and do that. Amen. Amen. My first time today. Welcome over there. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Another person, for the first time, you've not gotten a card. Nobody has reached you. Just raise up your hands, please. Another person. There's a brother. There's a very handsome brother in the middle here. Please, just next to the brother in the brown shirt. Let me give him. There's another person over there. Just wave your hands above your head. Just stay above your head that way. We'll come to you. Glory to God. We'll come to you. Glory to God. Can we just give God just about four minutes of quality praise? Just four minutes. <laughs> Let's go ahead and praise him now.
it as if you've got joy. You, you have to bounce to it. You have to bounce to it. So this is where we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got joy, 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 joy. Hallelujah. Just to let you know that Wednesday will be very powerful. Very powerful. Last Wednesday was Puff Puff Wednesday. This Wednesday is good. I was Puff Puff Wednesday. It was puffy. Praise God. It was puffy. Praise God. And surely. Amen. The quickest door out is our doors in front here. There are doors in front here on the other side. That's that's the way out. Glory. And there are doors at the back also. Amen. The skill acquisition program is here once again. And this time around, we are having Harvest Skill Acquisition Program in the city of Port Harcourt. My friends, if you know people that are in Port Harcourt, people that need to learn skill, people that are looking for a way to expand their income or go into a new stream of income, I want to encourage you to invite them for this special program. It promises to change their life. They are going to learn valuable skills and through those skills, they will be able to increase their income or even start a new stream of income. Wherever they are over, all over the city of Port Harcourt, make sure you get them to come. The details of when it is happening is on the screen. Remind them, follow up with them, get their details and also send to us so that we can also remind them and follow up with them. We look forward to seeing them at the HSAP at Portaco and their lives will really, really be changed. You know, I'm so glad because this is one thing that has given us to transform people's lives and we can't wait to see the transformation that will happen to our people in the city of Portaco. We look forward to seeing you there. God bless you.